Energy Executives is a special edition of Axpo's podcast Energy Voices. Regular episodes are in Swiss German and German. The following conversation is in English. Electricity should always be available, cheap, clean and local. At the same time, the protection of nature makes it difficult to build new energy infrastructures. We want to hear firsthand how Oxpo's executives are navigating this complex environment. Today's guest is Henriette Wendt, the Chief Operating Officer of Oxpo Group. In her role, she drives strategy, innovation and sustainability in key areas such as human resources, ethics and compliance, technology management, partnering and transformation. Henriette Wendt is talking to Karin Frey. Henriette Wendt, that sounds like one heck of a complicated portfolio. If you had to explain to your mother what you do all day, what is your mission? First and foremost, uh, there's a lot of modernization involved in what I do. We're uh, quite an old company over a hundred years and we're sitting in an environment where everything is changing and our strategy is changing. So modernization of Oxpo in particular with regards to technology and people. You come from Denmark. You've studied in Paris. You've worked for telecoms and the IT sector, respectively. You've come from Microsoft to Oxpo and just like CEO Christoph Brandt, you changed sectors as well. Is it because of the in innovation or why did you? So I'm a curious person uh, by nature and I like a challenge. So some people, they plan their careers 10 years in advance and I'm definitely not one of those. So when I see a great challenge working for great people, that's when I jump. So what you said is basically there's the um, technical side that's changing. There's the people side that changing where you drive change as well. Let's talk about technology first. I mean, it's sort of clear renewables, no doubt of a question. Um, but where is Oxbow going technically? Where do you drive innovation? So, of course, we have many types of technology at Axpo. I'm focusing on the IT side. Um, when I joined, my idea was to start um, and focusing on uh, the digitalization. Um, but what I saw was that we need to build the foundation first. So I have There been wasn't? <laughs> there was a foundation, but there were certain things that we needed to address. And, um, and we've been doing that over the last three years. Um, first one is the cloud transition. So moving our service into the cloud. We have a cybersecurity topic that's really important um, for everyone is becoming more important, of course. Um, and we need to address that. We need to focus on that. We uh, need to make sure that our employees have the right tools, that they have the laptops and, and software that they can work with and, and that we can support them when they're using it. And so we've been driving those topics over the last three years, as mentioned. And now we're starting to say, okay, what can we then do with data now that we have the basis? What will we do with data? And of course, also what can we do with AI? I think critical infrastructure, electricity is critical. Isn't that dangerous if you move everything to a cloud? Well, actually, it's a bit uh, counterintuitive maybe, but the cloud can be much more safe than having um, your own servers under the desk. Huh. How's that? Because the large companies, the hyperscalers that uh, run the data centers, they invest a lot in, in, in security. And so they have also very much up-to-date st uh, structures. One of the things that is noticeable, Axpo is becoming a lot more internationally. I think you've got about 30 Oxpo uh, seats or companies outside of Switzerland. Why is that so important? I mean, you belong to the cantons. You could just as well stay here, right? There's a number of reasons for that. One is that the business in Switzerland is is declining um, because we, our hydropower is going back to the canton. So we will, over time, we will lose that. Of course, we are, we're still building also renewable, but fundamentally that's going back to the cantons. And then of course we are phasing out nuclear. So relatively speaking, our Swiss business will become much smaller over time. At the same time, we're growing a lot internationally. We are building out renewables, uh, that is solar and wind in um, in other European countries where sometimes it's actually easier to move forward with the um, permitting processes. And at the same time, we follow our customers in the trading business. So we help customers with their energy supply and we do that also internationally. So we're growing a lot internationally as well. And growing probably means you will need new people. Is it fair to say that Switzerland is facing a labor shortage, which is expected to worsen in the upcoming years, especially the mint professions? 
And if yes, I mean, you want to recruit, how do you face that challenge? So it is true. It's not just in Switzerland. It's, it's in, in many countries. Um, we see challenges uh, in, in IT. Uh, we see also specific to CKW, the, uh, the people who go and, and install uh, solar panels on the roof is, is also a challenge for us. And, and interestingly, also in the nuclear power stations, we also, um, we also have uh, um, some challenges in, in, in recruiting because it's a very specific market and it's not very big. You're saying you're recruiting in the nuclear field. Are you counting on politics to reverse the course and reopen to nuclear technologies? No, that's actually not it. Um, First of all, we see a, a wave of retirements coming. People have, our employees have been uh, in the power plants for quite a long time. Um, and, and it's, again, it's a very small market. We have uh, a number of projects that we need to think about, especially if we think about the fact that we may even prolong the, or continue the operations. We need to continue improving and, and maintaining our power stations at a, at a high security level. Sustainable recruiting would also mean, um, Things like diversity, inclusion, a culture of non-discrimination. Let's be honest. I mean, you are the first woman on the Energy Executive pod podcast. Um, it's not really diverse, is it? Why is Oxbow still so male-driven? It has a lot of historical reasons. And I would say two things. Uh, the technology business or the technology area and the energy business are historically not areas where women have been very numerous. And of course that, that generates uh, a situation where we have a lot of men. Um, that is of course changing. We do have women, uh, we see more women, but it's of course an, an, a conscious effort that we make to create more diversity in the company. So what would you tell a woman why it's interesting to work in this field? I think it's, it's interesting, not just for women, also for men. We have a, a fantastic situation right now. I mean, first of all, what we do is so important. We saw that during the energy crisis, we're right in the middle of a transition and, and it's so important for everyone. The energy security supply is, is, is fundamental. And we are in the middle of a transition where we see both externally with technology and geopolitics and internally as well with the recruiting where we're growing and we're becoming more international. And of course, the sustainability topic who doesn't want to be in the middle of that? But generally, I mean, if I think of Oxbow and I dare say from a public point of view, when people hear Oxbow, they hear, oh, those are the nuclear guys. You know, how do you work on your image? That is true. I, unfortunately, a lot of uh, people we talk to in the recruiting context, they don't, uh, they don't necessarily know uh, what we do and how international we are and all the exciting topics that we work on. And so we've spend a lot of time talking to uh, the target groups that recruit, but also doing uh, more uh, employer branding campaigns. We also participated in the certification of Great Place to Work, which is an independent international organization that helps us position ourselves as a, as a company and help explain who we are. So if you want to attract people, that would also mean, well, marketing is one thing you just mentioned, but that would also mean you'd have to have a, a good culture. Um, and that's changing as well. Society wants change. The younger generations, they want uh, part-time work. They want uh, life-work balance, especially also women. Um, where is Oxbow at that? So we've been working on our culture for quite a long time. It was one of the first topics I landed on my desk when I joined. Uh, clarifying our culture is, is important to help people understand what is expected of them. So we define a strategy, which means what we do. And then we define what does, how do we work together as, as, as culture? And with that, we, when I joined, we did uh, quite a lot of work uh, involving a lot of people. So we asked people first, how, how do they see the value or the culture at, at, at Axpo? Then we defined our values and, and now we're, we're focusing on, 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 on how do we live these values? So what is it that the employees want? So one of the things, uh, one of the values is, is care about people so that we, uh, uh, open communication, we provide feedback and that we put ourselves in each other's shoes. So uh, empathy really. And that's one of the topics where we have had most to do, uh, and where we've been doing quite a lot of work to, to create the awareness in the organization and make people aware of the fact that it's really important. So are the women joining? 
They are. We are making a lot of progress. Our aim is to have 30% women by 2030. So we still have some way to go. Um, and where we see here is it's important that we have women across the organization in different functions, but also at, at all different levels to really gain the benefits of, of having the women and having the role models in the organization. But the glass ceiling is still there, is it? Well, I hope not. I see that as, as, a, as a challenge that we need to take up and, and especially by promoting women in senior positions and showing that we really take it seriously. Um, so we have, uh, for example, a female nuclear power plant head uh, coming in 2026. We've also hired other senior executives and uh, female senior executives. Uh, for example, our new head of procurement, the CFO of our trading business. And, and that shows that we take it seriously and, and show that we have role models in the organization. There's probably also reasons for diversity and it's not just, you know, because it's got to be done, right? No, it helps us uh, develop and it helps us uh, drive innovation. Let's talk about those technical in innovations. Um, many hopes are pinned on that, especially when it comes to sustainability, to the renewables. How and where are you pushing technical innovation? So we have a lot of different dimensions of, of technical development. I would say uh, from, a, from a market perspective, we, are, we do what we call serious experimentation. There we look at batteries, for example, we look at um, hydrogen, we uh, develop uh, in the biomass, uh, biogas area, um, and, and we develop that in the market. Then, of course, we also look at other types of technologies. Um, we have a small group of, of people who do investments and partnering with the startups. And there we partner with small companies who have new technologies, for example. We've looked at um, companies that have new battery technologies, for example. So, but you're not producing them. You have no. them producing. Exactly. So we don't have research and development. We partner with companies that have technologies that we can leverage. And you see what's coming, what's exactly. coming. I exactly. mean, especially batteries, that's going to be more and more important. Exactly. So there's many different uh, battery technologies out there. We've talked to companies that have, um, uh, yeah, solid state uh, heat uh, storage, for example, thanks to bricks. We look at other types. How does that work? <laughs> so they, they actually have bricks. They heat up and, and take electricity and transform it into industrial heat. So when the, when the electricity is cheap, they store it, they can store it for six hours and then they can sell it to industry purposes as heat. Uh, but bricks are heavy. So that's it's for the very, big very stuff. Huh? Yeah, exactly. It's not for cars, but of course there are other technologies. We've also, um, we've invested in a small company that takes smart meter data and analyzes with the AI and, and different algorithms to understand uh, patterns and help customers become more efficient and save energy. Um, we use that um, by CKW, our uh, daughter company in Luzern. They have introduced uh, what they call the energy tracker where their customers can see how how is the energy consumption going. And if something happens, they will be alerted. I don't know, you left the fridge open or I don't know. The swimming Does it pool work? Do people react to it? Yes. Because it, electric electricity you don't see normally, it becomes exactly. visible and that makes it... Exactly. Applicable. Exactly. And, and this company is, is present in many different uh, countries. So of course they have a huge basis for understanding patterns and that's what, uh, that's what they help us and help the customers at CKW understand, okay, this is not normal. Here's, here's somewhere where you need to react. You mentioned AI just now. Um, how important is it going to become or where does it in fact actually work at Expo? It's probably going to affect more or less everywhere, but in very different ways. And we don't know yet what that means. We've applied AI in, in, in some areas. We are still in experimentation because the technology is moving so fast. So for us, it's, it's experimentation, but we have a couple of areas where we have um, used or we are using AI. We use it, for example, um, we send drones out to um, inspect and, and look at um, the status of our grid. And instead of um, having people driving out in their cars and climbing up and, and looking at what does it look like and then potentially repairing, we can send a drone and, and with AI can compare images of what it should look like to what it looks like. Another area we've done um, very interesting is um, we have when we have our uh, run of river um, power stations uh, in Switzerland, we need to allow the fish to pass. But that's for us not very good because that means that the water also passes. So we try to create what we call a fish ladder and, and then um, create a door to allow the fish to go in and out when they're there and then close it when they're not there. 
And in order to do that, we had uh, quite a lot of analysis and, and also using algorithms to understand where are the fish and, and when do they come and, and how do we open the door so that they can pass without letting too much water pass. So that's another area um, which helps us then understand how can we be more efficient and how can we also help the environment. And, and that was a very nice environmental story as well. That sounds really great. But where do you see the challenges? I think that the challenge is that the, the technology is moving so fast. So keeping up to speed all the time and, and allowing the experimentation um, and defining the use cases for us that make sense. We need to be open-minded about that and, and allow people everywhere in the organization to experiment. And at events, uh, startups, employees, um, AI, climate change, diversity in a world, as you said, that changes so fast and dramatically. Uh, how do you actually keep control over everything? Do you have sort of a secret of success? So first of all, I don't think I'm really in control. I mean, that's, uh, that's something that is <laughs> nobody is, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> For me, the secret is to have a great team. I have a really great team and they know what they're talking about and they would know what they need to do. For me, the trust and the empowerment is important because I cannot be in every area and I shouldn't be in every area. I am here to make sure that they do a great job. So I support them and I challenge them. And then together we can do a great job. So it's all in a nutshell about trust and cooperation. That's it. Henriette Wendt, thank you so much for this conversation. Thank you. Energy Executives is the special edition of Energy Voices, the podcast from Axpo. We look forward to your feedback via email at podcast at axpo.com or on X, formerly Twitter, using the hashtag Energy Voices. Oh, 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 o